Hi, right, new friendos. We're starting out today's project with the in situ Alto Vivarium, which is their newest vivarium on their website, similar to the Amazonia, but this tank is actually 36 inches tall, whereas the Amazonia is 24 inches tall. So it can make a really cool vertical vivarium or a vivarium that's got some taller plants, which is hard to grow in a shorter tank. Uh, like previous builds guys, we're starting out with the great stuff window and door expanding foam. Um, if you're in a different country and not in the United States, I really don't know what kind of foam you guys have there, so I can't give any suggestions of what foam you should use. Um, but just go along, do the back and the side panels, taking your sweet old time, going line by line, and once you've got everything laid out, uh, and it's starting to cure. What I like to do next is to spray it with a fine mist. Uh, it definitely helps it cure faster and you can just do each panel uh, a little quicker before you turn it on its side and it doesn't sag off. Give the foam 24 hours to dry and now it's time to carve. And I'm using the wire drill brush attachment on my impact driver. I found that the impact drivers um, work way better than just a standard drill. Um, the drill doesn't jump around nearly as much with it. Uh, it's much more smooth to carve it out. But you guys have seen me do this process before. It is extremely messy, but I do think the end result is quite effective. And um, so far, it's honestly my favorite for how it looks and how fast the carving is done. Um, you spend more time cleaning it up than actually carving. And now we're going to move on to the most fun and what I think the most important step in the build. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using the window and door, great stuff, expanding foam. And I do think this is one of the most important steps. Um, the wood I'm using for this particular build is ghost wood. And I got this wood from my buddy Paul, um, the owner down at Frog Yeah. You can go check them out on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a lightweight wood, so not a whole lot of uh, bracing or foaming is needed. Uh, just enough to lock it down into place, as you can see, which I'm doing here. And basically, you just do that for all the pieces of wood, brace it up however you feel. Um, I'm using duct tape and toothpicks. And then after about 10 or 15 minutes where the foam dries um, to the touch where it's not sticky, I kind of compress it into itself. Um, it limits the amount of carving you'll need to do and also it really locks that wood down on the background which is what I was looking for. And once you're done you should have something that looks similar to this. Pretty successful hardscape in my personal opinion. And on to the next step. This next step is very important. We're locking the background down to that glass by putting a thick bead of silicone along the edge, smoothing it out, and I'm using clear silicone, so I'm gonna to need to cover it with something. Dry lock doesn't stick to the silicone very well, so you'd be able to see the yellow foam through it. I'm just using some dried tree fern fiber that I had, um, just gonna cover it up there, and after I put the dry lock and cement color on it, it'll actually give it a really cool texture. So here you can see I've got my dry lock original basement masonry waterproofer, my quick crete cement color buff, and the color charcoal. And I, what I like to do is I make smaller batches. Um, so I'm just going to dump some into a 32 ounce deli container. And that is the buff color. And this is a little bit of charcoal. The charcoal goes a long way. So you want it to be, for a base color, you want it lighter. It's uh, a lot easier to darken a lighter color than it is to lighten a darker color. So you wanna start with a lighter base and uh, you guys have seen me do it in previous builds. This is the color that I've got and you just start using a cheap 50 cent brush from Walmart and paint it on the background like so. If you're a sucker, you'll do this. <laughs> if you're smart, you will do this and just dump it, turn the, the tank on its side, just dump the dry lock all over the place. You'll probably use more product this way. Um, if you're worried about conserving that dry lock, then this may not be the best method, but as far as speed's concerned and not being a pain in the A, um, you're gonna wanna just, uh, do, do it this way. Dump the dry lock right on and this is what your finished results should look like for the hardscape with the background. 
Um, I went ahead and skipped ahead because I don't want you guys to get bored to tears. But um, I just do that method and you know I mix in darker batches, lighter batches and then blend them. And this is the look that you will achieve. And now it's time to pour in the substrate. I happen to have some ADA Amazonia version 2 aqua soil laying around. This is what I used in my tub, tadpole tubs. So I decided to try it out in a vivarium and see how it works. Um, just pour it out of the bag, straight out of the bag. It didn't wash it or anything or, you know, pour it in. And I use my hands to kind of level it off to make any levels that I like. Um, yeah, and then spray it down, give it a good soak. Um, I actually use the uh, spray nozzle to get any of the aqua soil out of the crevices of the wood as you see here. And now it's time to add the moss. I am using a low growing tropical moss as I've used in many of my vivariums. If you've seen on the channel before, it's the same stuff. Um, it's as simple as tearing off a piece and putting it right on top of the substrate. Uh, I've never tried growing moss on this substrate before, so um, who knows, it may be a disaster, but I will try and hopefully it goes well. Um, after you've got all the moss set in place, uh, give it a quick spray down before adding the leaf litter or any other little accents. So um, here, as you can see, I'm adding, adding in some accent pieces of wood. Um, it's just going to create something for plants, moss frogs, whatever to climb on. It's going to create planes and levels on that ground to make it more interesting. And then of course we added the leaf litter and we're going to give that a quick spray down as well. And now it's time to plant. This is Makodi's Patola. It's a jewel orchid. Very pretty little plant. Just place it right into the substrate. And this is Margravia centenisi. Uh, whenever I'm laying Margravia on a background where there's dry lock, you always want to set down some sphagnum moss underneath it. This is Philodendron varicosum. Uh, this is the mini version, or dwarf, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It's just smaller. This is Anthurium waterberryanum. And again, just place it directly into the substrate very straightforward approach as far as planting these plants. Uh, first time working with this plant, um, I really like it and I've kind of had it on my radar for a little while. So this is Anthurium vecchii, also known as the King Anthurium. This plant gets very large. This is Margravia red umbellata. Just gonna drape it across the front here. It's a very nice Margravia, so it should look really cool growing up the whole vivarium. This is Margravia regular umbellata. Again, you can see as I'm placing it, if I want it in a spot to climb the background, I'm going to start it out on the sphagnum. This is Philodendron mame. Again, this plant gets really large as well. So the plants that get really large, I'm trying to kind of keep them towards the back. But this is a 36 inch tall tank so it can handle some of the taller plants. This is Philodendron natita. It's one of my favorite plants. I use it in almost all of my vivariums. It's a really cool vining philodendron uh, and I'm just planting it by pinning it up with some wooden toothpicks. A lot of peas there. And this is Peperomia marginella uh, and I always plant this in tanks just by draping it off of pieces of wood. I do set some sphagnum down underneath it just to keep it wet so it doesn't dry out. Moving on to the orchids that I used. These orchids were purchased from Polly at Vivariums in the Mist and as far as planting goes I used the super glue gel method to plant these that I've used in previous videos. If you have not seen any of those videos I'll be sure to put a link in this video for you. Um, but these here are the Plurothallus grobii mini yellow and also white forms. And this is Pleurothallus fusca. I'm sure I said that wrong. And here we have Sir Hopatellum foreri. This is Dendrobium aberrans. And here is Bulbophyllum triarsitella. I'm sure I said all those wrong. 
If you do a three-sided background and it is a standalone tank, I recommend covering the sides with something. I'm using a matte black vinyl wrap and you simply just measure it to size and then put it on as flat as possible and then what I like to do is spray it with water and squeegee it with something um, so you can get all the air bubbles out for a nice smooth and sleek finish um, so just get all the edges and then um, I do measure it you know a little large so you trim off the excess and wipe it down and you've got a nice clean matte black finish on your sides. Alrighty, friendos. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun working on a tank with this size height. It gives you a lot of flexibility and freedom to use some plants that you normally wouldn't use. So, um, yeah, hope you guys learned something and enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Ufraga Histrionica. Goldberg, out.